All right, team. Good morning, good evening, and good night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us today. Today's topic is uh, as you, is our usual bend grounds, but we're going to be focusing on identifying PMOS, PMOS in the waveforms. Some basic disclosures. We discuss particulars of ventilator modes. There is no endorsement of any particular mode, manufacturer, or company. Whatever we say, it's our opinion. It does not represent the Cleveland Clinic's opinion. My, these are my disclosures. I get some fees and royalties for books, chapters, and lectures, and co-owner of a patent with Rob Chatburn, uh, who will be with us today. Um, he's a consultant for these companies, and uh, he also gets some fees and royalties. I see you, Rob. Welcome in. These are recorded sessions, so keep your microphones muted so that they don't go into posterity. This gets posted to YouTube, uh, so be just mindful of that. The moderator may call upon members of the audience to comment, um, especially as you're putting comments on the chat. I'm monitoring this. If, I, if we need some clarifications, we may call on you, but this is a truly interactive uh, exercise, so do get involved as much as you want. No question is wrong, and this is a safe space. Um, we use a web poll, uh, WebEx poll to elicit the audience interaction, so uh, go for it. And uh, for those of you that work here at Cleveland Clinic, uh, we do provide CMEs and there will be a QR code at the end of the session. So we thought that we would do a little tutorial at the end of at the beginning of this uh, presentation and we're going to start by the the waveforms and essentially how those PMOS manifest here and I think that uh, we always come back to the equation of motion to understand how and what are we seeing in our waveforms and uh, what you have here is a, a, a volume control in which we're controlling the flow to have a square waveform and what you will see is that the pressure that the from the ventilator will be equal to the elastic and resistive uh, loads and and so the flow is being controlled and so does so does the volume so we're going to see all the interactions on the pressure waveform whenever there's a uh, pmos what we will see is a modification on the on the pressure waveform because the waveform for volume and flow are being controlled, so the ventilators are really good at that. And you see the change in the uh, pressure waveform. And so in this case, the patient is inhaling. And so because of that, the pressure uh, that should have been this straight line moves down. If the patient on the contrary is actually exhaling during inspiration or coughing, you will see then positive deflections on the, on the waveform. Or volume control. Rob, any comments here? All good. All righty. And in contrast, when you're in pressure control, um, the ventilator is controlling the ventilator, the pressure delivered by the ventilator, and the volume and the flow will be dependent on the resistance, the elastance, and actually the pressure generated by the, the patient. So ventilators are not that good at controlling pressure. They're good, but not that good. And you'll see some examples today. Uh, but in theory, it should look like a beautiful square waveform because that's what the ventilator is trying to deliver. And what you're going to see are changes on the volume and flow waveforms. Uh, in, in, we usually focus mainly on the flow waveform. Both uh, waveforms have the same information in general for, for the sake of PMOS, we focus on the flow waveform. And if the patient is taking a breath in the, uh, or adding to the pressure than the ventilator, what you're going to see is a deformation of the, the waveform uh, 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 moving away from the uh, baseline. So it would move upwards. And if the patient is trying to exhale uh, during inspiration, uh, what actually you will see is this waveform moving actually towards the baseline more rapidly. Rob? Good. All right. 
And uh, we also put here expiration because expiration is also a, a pressure controlled phase. So we're controlling the pressure. That's why you set the PEEP. And what you have is the P vent uh, is control. And so you see it on the flow. And so we are always, always come to the flow. And if there is a, the patient is trying to exhale actively, what you're going to see is it moving the, the way the, the pressure, the flow waveform will move away from the baseline. And if the patient is trying to take a breath in, it will move towards the baseline. So those are the ground rules. That's the, the basic observation. But I think that uh, putting this clearly into your brain of what you're looking at based on the basic anatomy of the waveforms will help you identify all the patient ventilator interactions. Roberto, any comments? Yeah, just one comment was that all of these distortions in the in the pressure and the volume, the flow and volume waveforms they're just arbitrary because p must can have just about any shape imaginable but the general direction and the, and the general trends that you've shown is what you have to keep in mind absolutely so yeah there's no actual normative way that the diaphragm contracts or the respiratory muscles uh, look, uh, look and it can happen at any phase of the inspiration or expiration. That's that's the cool part. So just uh, keep that in mind. Excellent point, Rob. All right. So let's start with a uh, uh, waveform. And and I, I know Aman, you you uh, think you wanted to comment on this one. So uh, before we do that, so start observing it. I'm gonna launch the the poll. I made it a little bit shorter so that it's not as long as before. So here goes the poll. And you can start answering these. We'll give you two minutes, observe the waveform, start answering. Tell us what you see, where is the PMOS and what's going on? By the way, I, I was told that th this is a during these exercises when we're doing the polls and put, people are watching these videos on Ben uh, on YouTube. They fast forward through here until they start hearing us, so they watch it at twice <laughs> the speed, and it works the same way. So Ariel asked, where is the poll? The poll should be on your WebEx app. It pops up. Uh, all right, 20 seconds to end. <clears throat> yeah, they won't see this if they're calling in with phone, right? Right. All right, then, uh, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, then, do you want to see the poll results first or see them at the end? You can see them now. All right, so let me let me share the results. Poll results, apply. So now you should be all able to see this. Um, the majority of people uh, answered that this was PCC MBA. Uh, the, what is the load? The majority identified this as being uh, resistive, although it was split between resistive and PMOS. In terms of the trigger, it was felt to be normal in majority of people. Some thought, thought that there could be some er early trigger. In terms of inspiration, uh, some mild work shifting. And the in terms of cycle, a large uh, around 
half of the people thought that this was normal, half of them thought that this was early. And in terms of exp expiration, uh, the majority thought that it was normal, although there were some that thought that there would there could be some expiratory work. Alrighty, all yours, uh, a man, go for it. Okay, so for the tag, I would agree uh, with PCC and VA, and the only reason I say that is because I I see the the mode it's PRVC. Otherwise, it would have been difficult for me to say. But the PRVC is PCC and VA. Um, for the load, so um, I would say both ins inspiratory and expiratory load is a resistive. Um, so it's kind of interesting uh, profile, flow profile there. So it's a fairly high inflation pressure. And um, there is this initial peak during both the first few milliseconds of inspiration and expiratory flow. But uh, if we just disregard that peak, the rest of the flow is looks like ha you know the the overall respiratory system has a very prolonged time constant. So for ex especially in the expiratory, it just takes forever to return to the baseline, and even during inspiration, it's 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 very like you know um, delayed time constant. And I would just say that I think you know the initial peak is probably just the air exiting the central mm. airways, which we you know we see in in if the pressure delivered is too high and the pressure difference is too high. So I think that's just you know the air exiting the central airways, which which happens at a higher flow rate. But then the actual, uh, you know, the time constant of the distal airways is reflected in the the rest of the the flow pattern there. So I would say this is resistive. Um, moving on to PV discordance, so the trigger. I think it's fine. Uh, so we have the first two breaths, even the first one is the previous breath, but that the looks like there are flow triggered, patient triggered breaths. Um, so, and the trigger looks fine there. Um, there is almost zero work shifting. I mean, the only thing that's happening is the patient's triggering the breath. And I don't see any evidence of PMUS after the trigger, because if you look at the passive breath, which is the to the right of the screen, it almost looks identical to the patient triggered breath. So there's almost no no PMOS. Um, and cycle looks fine to me. I would say it's okay. Now there is this argument people can say that you know the flow profile is not returning to zero before cycling. I personally don't think that should define early cycle. For me, early cycle is if the there's active PMOS after the set i time which i don't see here so i would call the cycle normal and i don't see any expiratory pmos i think it's pretty passive so normal hey, thank you aman uh very, very nice read uh, so let's start by the tag uh, I, I we did this on purpose of leaving the the sorry the the tag up here prvc so that you all could see it actively so that we didn't spend much time uh, going over it because it's it's impossible for you to to define what's the targeting scheme on this uh, in these cuts at least on this sequence of bread so it's definitely adaptive so what that means is that we set a target tidal volume and the ventilator is going to move up or down the inspiratory pressure to achieve that target tidal volume and you can see that it's at the same height here so uh, most likely this this patient is getting the target tidal volume because there has been no change in between them. You you read correctly the, the in terms of the load, you read that this was resistive. And uh, you you talked a little bit about this peak and then uh, the 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 differences in the peak and then the uh, and the rest of the flow throughout the breath. Rob, any comments there? Um, I just want to commend him for um, comparing the passive breath with the active breath. That's when you have that ability and two breaths are side by side. That's that's a brilliant way to show any effect of PMUS. And and like you said, is virtually none. It's just a trigger effort. Excellent. So. Um... Uh, and I, I would also comment uh, a point here that you 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 made a thing about the flow, the peak flow at the beginning of the breath, and then how it has this uh, rapid drop and then uh, an increase. What what's your what, what were your thoughts about that thing? I've kind of you know 
thought about it, especially during the expiration. Like if you see, you know, there's this huge expiratory flow almost reaching 130, 140. Um, and then suddenly drops down to very low levels. So uh, part of it is recoil. Uh, as you can see, you know, the, you know, the vent tries to lower the airway pressure below the set P level, which is just a vent feature. But I think like it's it's also um, what, based on what I've read is the even if, for example, if you have asthma, like you have peripheral bronchoconstriction, um, the initial pressure differential uh, releases the air from the central compartments uh, where there's no constriction. So um, you release the, the initial few cc's very quickly, the dead space, for example, and then the rest of the air, which is kind of coming from the peripheral airways then takes a time because that reflects the actual time constant of the the rest of the actual you know the respiratory system and this is similar prop to probably the flow volume loop comparisons between a central airway obstruction versus uh, an asthma patient would have like similar logic to that that that's kind of what what i've um thought in my mind yeah uh, th this one is uh I, I, I hear you're talking about perhaps some of the com the air that is in the circuit and the minimum amount that can be in the airways. Um, what, what I would point you out is, is the oscillations that you see on the airway up here and down here. You see how the pressure drops below and, and you, you recognize this uh, rapidly as a uh, thing as, as that, the, the time constant controller from the that the the Mackay has, so I I'm not sure that I can make an assessment necessarily on two different time constants here from the central airways and the distal airways uh, uh, during this time. I think that the, what you're seeing is artifact from 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 depressurization and from pressurization and trying to keep the pressure where where it should be, and so it gives you this this abnormal looking waveform instead of giving you a nice decaying waveform like that. Um, that's what I would say uh, under the circumstances, but I, I don't know, Rob, any thoughts on this? Yeah, it's yeah. difficult to say because you, you're just seeing an under damp system. Um, it's just hitting this initial high spikes and flow are because of the uh, initial pressurization of the circuit and, and then it hits the high impedance of the, the patient. And I suppose you could argue technically those are two time constants, but it, it doesn't mean anything clinically. I think like you said, you just ignore the oscillation because it's just, it just a ventilator trying to be a, a perfect pressure controller and it's not. Very good. Now, thing, yeah, I think that you you did a uh, so so. It's hard to say right now uh, anything of that just because of this, and and so we we agree with you. Thing, great great job there. The trigger, I I I was caught by this waveform because if you see the this waveform, which is passive, this uh, this one is triggered by the ventilator, and this one by the by the patient ac according to the ventilator. Do you see any evidence of PMOS? Not really. I mean, other than the fact that this is a flow triggered breath and um, yeah. maybe in the pressure, I see a little bit dip, but it, it's not definitive. Um, yeah, that's that's as much as you can see. Uh, but but in reality, the flow waveforms between both of them are practically the same. Perhaps the flow looks a little bit lower, the peak flow a little bit lower on this one. So really, really nice, nice red there. The trigger, I think, is normal. Inspiration, we agree with you. If this one is passive and this one is active, there is no evidence of PMOS in both, right? So that's an outstanding re read. In terms of cycle, you're absolutely right. Uh, the way that we read this is if there is no PMOS uh, evidence of uh, of, acti uh, of patient activity, then this cannot be uh, early or late cycle or early cycle in this case, because there is no PMOS. So uh, technically, this is just a setting that that somebody somebody put. And then expiration, it's normal. There's no evidence of PM, of PMOS, and I don't see actually any failed triggers on this patient. That he during the, all this period of time, it looks pretty darn calm, and you don't see anything either on this on this waveform over here. What um, so really good observation. 
Does this patient have auto PIP? Um, it, it, it's possible, but I would say probably not because it's, it is it does look like it's coming back to baseline. We may have to zoom in a little bit because yeah. it scales a little bit high. But I, can, I, I would do an expiratory hold to make sure. Exactly. So th th this is a common a common error that we have. Remember that the majority of ventilators will have auto adjustments of the gain on their on their waveform. So th this is all the way to 150 liters. So it's really hard for your eyes to 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 see completely the difference between these two. So the only way to unmask that is either an end expiratory pause or a gain change. So good call. Any other comments? Questions from the audience? I just have a comment, Eduardo. Since this is such a high level analysis, I'll just throw this in there. If those first two breaths were actually patient triggered, that means there must have been some PMUS, right? Right. But the PMUS was very short acting. So, strictly speaking, the way we define synchrony, this would be a late cycle. Right. Right. Because if if you if the ventilator was going to just follow the patient's PMS, it would go up and down. So if this was PAV, for example, or NAVA, this might have been a very short little tiny breath. That's a that's a so, fair point. Fair point. So it's but it's very difficult when there's very nothing more than a trigger effort, even if it was a late cycle, it's clinically irrelevant, right? Right. And that's how we define majority of these things as cl clinical or clinically or uh, relevant or not clinically relevant. That's wonderful. All right. Any other questions? I, I don't see questions on the. Uh, so Moja says the rise time set is short. That's why it shoot up. Uh, that that's right. So and and th this is a, a classic thing that that we see is people getting concerned about these peaks. And in general terms, we we put, we set our rise time at zero or the minimum possible because this has no relevance unless the patient was auto cycling. That's auto cycling. I'm gonna kill. That's terrible. Uh, uh, false cycling uh, because of or reaching a a a threshold. Then it, this is com completely inconsequential for for this patient. Alrighty, very good. Excellent red uh, amount uh, master level. All righty, next one. So I'm gonna put the the poll again. Here it goes. So go ahead. And whoever wants to, the fellows, read this, send me a text or or just unmute yourself. Gonna let this go for a little bit. So, all right. Thank you, Ahmed. So we're gonna. We still have one more minute. Keep reading. And if obviously if you don't have access to the poll, just do it in a paper. The the key here is to commit yourself. Is read these waveforms. These have clinical relevance for the patients. And just for those of you that think that I go hunting for these interactions, no, I just walk around the unit, take pictures, and this is what we see. And I can bet you that if you do the same, you would find this. Now, we welcome any of you, if you have uh, images, send us the images. We, we love to see this come out and read them together. All right, 20 seconds left.
All right, uh, Ahmed, uh, so, sorry. Yeah, Ahmed Gohar is going to be reading this one. Ahmed, do you want to see the poll first or do you want to uh, read it first and then see the poll? It's okay, we can go through the poll first. All righty, here goes the poll. And I'm sharing it now. Majority of people read this as PC, IMB, SS, no, 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 sorry. PC, CSBA, so pressure support with adaptive. Uh, the load was thought to be PMOS by essentially almost all, with some people, four people thinking that this was resistive. Excellent. Uh, in terms of trigger, the thought was that this was normal in majority of the participants inspiration with severe work shifting by and half of them uh, work shifting the other half majority thinking this was severe work shifting the cycle was thought to be normal or late by by some and expiration there was expiratory work by everybody everybody read that one all right all yours uh Ahmed, go for it all right, so I'm going to start with the tag, and um, I think the tag here is PCCSVS. Um, uh, so the pressure support mode is the classic like uh, uh, set point because you set a certain target for your pressure during the inspiration and expiration. Um, and obviously, um, all the breaths here are spontaneous, meaning patient triggered and patient cycled. Um, in terms of the load, I would agree with the majority of the people. PMAS is the um, overdriving load here in inspiration and expiration. And whenever PMAS is the, um, is the load, it makes it very challenging to tell any other load unless you're lucky enough to have some passive breath in the sequence you're seeing. Um, and in, in kind of commenting on what people said about maybe some resistive load, so when you have expiratory work like this patient and some PMAS in the expiration, it kind of gives you this similar appearance to a resistive load because remember, the expiratory effort will suck the waveform down more negative away from the baseline. And if the next breath is triggered, um, it might appear that the flow is not returning to the baseline, but this is by nature due to the PMAS. Um, so it doesn't ex ex exclude though the, the presence of a resistive load might as well have one, but you won't be able to tell because of the penis. And then in terms of uh, discordance, um, so I'm, I'm tempted to say that the trigger is normal uh, in the sense of it's happening. And once the patient does the effort, the flow starts right away. Uh, so I don't think it's delayed. And then there is work shifting. It is quite significant during inspiration. Because um, you can see that the pressure waveform almost drops to even below the peep level, uh, which kind of tells you that there is significant work shifting happening. Um, cycling wise, um, again, uh, kind of challenging with the expiratory work, but I'm turning, I'm leading towards seeing it's actually a normal cycle because I don't see any significant effort, uh, like inspiratory effort to tell me that this was early cycling during expiration. Um, and then in expiration, again, there was expiratory work uh, evident by the waveform deformation. Excellent, uh, Ahmed. Uh, really good, good read and teachings. Um, Rob, any comments? Yeah, the, uh, the breath sequence is a CSVS, and there wasn't an option for that, I don't think. Right. Sorry. I, so I that's a typo, him. but that's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Yes, so definitely set point. I think that your your read of the waveform is very good. So again, we we look at the flow waveform uh, whenever you're controlling pressure, and so you you read of effort. What you would expect on a patient that was passive would be this waveform like that. So all of these areas that I'm shading is PMOS. It's a manifestation of uh, PMOS from the patient. I think that your insight into this waveform that looks like it's crossing uh it's at the end of the at the end of expiration it's still not reaching zero it's a common thing that people read it as if it was a uh, resistive load and i i really enjoyed your comment of highlighting the fact that there could be auto uh, air trapping and auto peep however it's impossible to read it under these circumstances 
In terms of the trigger, the, the what type of trigger is here? Well, this is a pressure triggered, which is usually less sensitive than flow. Um, Very good. So, so you can see uh, that there's a, a drop in the it it it's a trigger by the by the patient, and so. If you keep this in mind as you're thinking of how do I reduce the work of reading on this individual, right? Uh, how do I how do I make it easier for this person to to breathe? Right now it's in a pressure trigger, but um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the the trigger and what's the actual pressure for this patient because there's something that is happening here when the patient is taking a breath in the pressure is going down, right? And then when the pressure the patient is exhaling, it's exhaling against this, and so the pressure goes up. Uh, do, do you see that? Um, so it goes up when he exhales, in when he inhales, up when he exhales. The actual pressure for this patient was not the PEEP. You, you may imagine that the PEEP is up here, right? That's so. But the actual PEEP set PEEP for this patient was around down here. So it's much lower. What happens is when the patient is exhaling, the pressure is going up because the patient is doing effort to go out. Isn't that cool? Well, not cool. Yeah, the patient's doing work both on inspiration and expiration. You might as well extubate them. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. So, so that's something that obviously I did not put you here. How much that was the set peep. But that 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 happens often when there's enough work shifting and the patient is breathing out that the pressure will go above the baseline and below the baseline. So all of this is work that the patient is doing, uh, and this is all work, expiratory work against the ventilator that the the patient is doing. Very intense. Uh, so I, I I agree with your cycle and your your trigger. Otherwise, it's triggering when when you told them to trigger. It's just. And then finally, there's this waveform here that uh, a couple have pointed out as if they were a failed trigger. So I want to hear uh, what what are the, your thoughts of, about these failed triggers? Uh, is this failed trigger? Is there something else? I think I wouldn't necessarily call it a failed trigger because it doesn't reach the the baseline. Um, so I'm I'm kind of now. They are in an inspiratory flow direction in a sense. So are they like a, an inspiratory effort during expiration um, being triggering effort in a way or another? Possible. Um, and I mean, they do correlate actually with a depth and the pressure when you look at the pressure waveform as well. Um, but they are not really reaching the baseline. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of having um, Difficulty labeling them as failed triggers. Yeah, Rob, that's real hard to say. It, it could be just a relaxation of the expiratory effort. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's equivalent to an inspiratory effort. But then it's followed again by another expiratory effort. It's like this patient just going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's very, it's very hard to read a mixed. Uh, a, a failed uh, trigger on these patients uh, because the patient is doing effort. So it, it could be relaxation. It could be that he just let go for a second. And actually, this dip on pressure may not be that he is sucking in. It may be that he's just stopped putting pressure against the ventilator and the pressure is going back to peep to 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 baseline. So I I also had trouble calling this during active exhalation. A, uh, as a as a failed trigger. I thought that this patient was just simply exhaling actively and then has a little bit relaxation. So the I I I also have trouble doing that during during active exhalation to call it call, call it so. But but it's interesting though. And I guess Is this tidal volume like nine hundred or a liter. Yeah. The, 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 yes, it, it was very 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 high. So well, the question, what, what do you do? Well, that's the question that Sandish sent to us: is uh, how, what would you do to, to these patients? And so the the first question, I will open up. Uh, Gohar, you you you're you're in charge of this. You you have read this beautifully. What would you do for this patient? I mean, I think if he's uh, 
is excubatable clinically is in well and good. If not, um, kind of the reflex thing that comes to your mind is, oh, let's give him more pressure support and support him more. Uh, now, the, the only thing that would come to my mind is, uh, as, um, as Rob have pointed out, is the volumes are huge. Uh, so again, comes to that conundrum of, are we in the safety or are we in the comfort uh, course of our clinical course? If we're concerned about um, ventilation associated trauma and we are still in the safety, then probably sedation is what I would reach for if this patient is not extubatable. Um, if we're more in the kind of area where we're thinking about comfort and liberating, I might see if I give this patient more support, is he going to settle for the same volumes he's getting now, but do less effort? Um, and we'll just try it while being at the bedside and, and see what he does with his volumes and, uh, and PMAS on the waveforms. Uh, so increasing the support would be, uh, would be the thing. And then, yeah, to your point that you're writing, why is he doing this excessive effort? Um, is there anything that we can correct, like pain or, or anxiety, um, retention, anything else? And kind of looking at his other vitals would be helpful to point us towards that too, if it's tachycardic or hypertensive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is this is the classic uh, situation that, that I see, and I, I presume many of you are relate to this, is that those patients that are doing this amount of effort, that we keep going down on the pressure support uh, to try to keep them within tidal volume. Uh, and and there is patients that you just cannot achieve that uh, by doing that, and so you put them in situations in which they are doing now work against the machine uh, for the same amount of tidal volume that they're generating now on their on their own. So they are doing more work rather than the ventilator doing the work for the same amount of tidal volume, and you have to make that that judgment call of uh, is this comfort or is are we going for safety. And go from there. Uh, and so it, it's easy to say if the goal for this patient was co it was safety, then I think that the 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 answer starts go narrowing down to option number three. But if the option is more towards comfort, you you're gonna be moving towards option number two, uh, as long with uh, along with some pain and and uh, or assessment of why this patient is going to that level of of support. So any comments? Any, any other concerns? Uh, there is a question, but it came in an odd way and I cannot see it here. Uh, it appeared for a second. Uh, so we'll see if, if it appears on the chat. All righty, very good. All right, so let's move to the next uh, curve. Really good discussion. So he, here, here comes another one. And I'm going to open the poll. Give me one second. Here we go. All right, you should be able to see the poll now. And if anybody wants to read this waveform, please send me a, a message through WebEx. Any of the fellows that wants to get onto it. Remember, we're here to learn this is a safe space. If this were, if this was so easy, we would not have to do seven event rounds for the world uh, to understand them. Okay, and I know somebody is asking to annotate I, I, uh, the session. We will we can't let you annotate because if not, our screen would be showing everything that you're annotating. Okay. 
as I'm reading this, I see a lot of people um, joining. This is pretty cool. Group Joshi, hello, one of our Master X fellows. Jan Paul and Dr. Sierra from Mexico. Ariel Garnero. Really cool. Our APP is joining the force, Catherine Bash. It's fantastic. A good contributor, Richard Bolt, who always sends us high quality statements. Okay, anybody wants to read this? I can go for it again. Ahmed, you're you're you you're on fire. Right, let me pull the poll and see if any of your Pierce wants to, and if not, you're gonna go. All right, let me show the poll results to the world. So now everybody, uh, almost everybody, actually, this is pretty cool. Uh, be, volume control, uh, set point, and dual were both uh, two of the options for the tag. And that's that's uh, a good amount of knowledge of knowing what's the underlying uh, settings on this ventilator. In terms of the elastic, the the, ro the load was read as elastic. In terms of trigger, it was read as normal. Normal inspiration, normal cycle, and normal expiration. So a normal waveform already. Okay, anybody besides Ahmed? And if not, Ahmed is up. All right, Ahmed, hit it. All right, so um, can I agree with, with uh, both tags? I mean, from this, just the sequence of images, it looks like VC, CMVS was like a descending ramp in terms of how the flow waveform is set up, but you can see it's still flow is very controlled, um, very geometrical. Uh, now to my colleagues who said VC, IMVD, I know you're there, a man. Uh, so yeah, this is like the servo. Uh, it does have this feature uh, that is not shown here on the screen, uh, but actually if the patient does enough effort, it can switch from volume control to pressure control. So it's actually dual. And then the second thing is if the effort is at the end of the breath and it's strong and prolonged enough, it might switch to a complete uh, spontaneous breath and allow the patient to cycle. Um, hence, uh, you might have some mandatory and, and, sp and spontaneous breath, hence the VCI and VD. Uh, so both of them are correct. Um, what is the load? Uh, elastic, um, as evident by, I think it is elastic as evident by the time constant on the expiratory flow. You can see we're back to the baseline in almost a second. So the time constant is quite short here, maybe uh, 0.2 or less. And then uh, you can also see when you look at the pressure waveform uh, for inspiration that the uh, slope uh, is quite high. Um, after you're over that uh, resistive part, it, it kind of jumps quite a bit and ends up at the peak inspiratory pressure. Um, so I agree with elastance here. And then in terms of PV discordance, there's no P. So I'm tempted to kind of just not answer any of the questions. Uh, but yeah, no, no, uh, no signs of PMS, no signs of patient effort. Uh, my bet is this patient uh, could likely be paralyzed or heavily snowed. Um, so, yeah, um, I would say like normal for everything or just there's no no actual interaction. Very good. Uh, ec excellent thoughts here. There is no, the, the, so you guys, the, this, this picture has so much information about how ventilators behave. So the first one is the hidden feature that, um, uh, Ahmed talked about, which would be if they press the, bu the button that's called flow adaptation, that turns this mode from BCC MBS to BC IMB DD. So uh, it changes to a dual dual control. Correct, Rob? Uh, that's correct. And and if it is that, then it would be a constant flow. You don't get a ramp with the flow uh, augmentation. Yeah. So, so this looks like a ramp, right? It looks like both the 
rise time was set and the ramp was set. So if if the ramp was set, then it, it would not be dual dual targeting. Now, this looks like a servo eye, and most of the servo eyes don't have the uh, those three options, but some of them do. Some of them were upgraded. The servo U's all have the upgrade, I believe, at this time. I think that you read this very nicely, uh, Ahmed, that in the elastic load, I wanted to make a comment uh, about the the pressure waveform here. So, so you talked about the slope on the pressure waveform, and you have to be careful on this one in particular. There is a, a pretty uh, good sabotage here uh, that the engineers generated that I have no good explanation for. So this is a volume control mode. And as it stands in some of the ventilators, you can set instead of being a descending ramp. So the, the, the normal thing that we're uh, used to is a descending ramp that looks like that. I mean, imagine it's a perfect triangle. Uh, I, I cannot draw a perfect triangle with my, my hands, but instead of that, they created here, you can set a rise time of how fast do you get to the peak flow. And then instead of finishing at zero, you can set the, the amount of expiratory flow where you want to end. Normally, it ends at zero or five of, uh, of, of percent of the peak flow. And it ends there, but this is how it actually the the person that sets the ventilator set it here. And now in many of these ventilators, instead of having you to choose a square waveform versus a descending ramp, now what they tell you is to choose the percent of where you want to finish. So this would be a hundred percent, and this would be zero. So you can, depending on the mood that you have that day, you can come and say, okay, <laughs> let's put it at 40, you know? And, and if you ask me why, I have no idea of why would you set those differently. But what that does is when you do not set the, when the rise time is not immediate and the flow doesn't go to, to zero, then the slope on your waveform will look like this, which many of you may say, oh, the patient is recruiting or it's doing PMOS or it's doing, and actually what's happening is that the waveform uh, is not what you expect it to be, uh, which in this mode really does, well, it, it has implications for how flow and gas exchange happens in the alveoli. But I think that in regular practice, this makes no much sense to to have it set at 40 with a rise time that rises slowly. So it makes it very hard to read the physiology during the inspiratory portion. And as you did, you have to go and read it in the expiratory portion of what you you're looking at. Questions? No, I agree. I was initially, I was even going to make a comment on stress index, but then I realized, as you said, it's a descending ramp. So I can't really make that comment there because uh, you need like a constant flow um, to make that comment. Exactly. That, and that's so you bring stress index and that's also a common error. And actually, I'll show this once probably next next week, but we had a recent case in which the patient was paralyzed. And the I time was very short. It, it was a square waveform, but it was 0.5 the inspiratory time. So if you looked, this ventilator measures the stress index, and the stress index looked like the patient was having recruitment through the breath. But when you actually extended the inspiratory uh, time for the same tidal volume, then you were able to discern the the the, the flow waveform better the pressure waveform and the, the stress index changed to one. It was perfectly square. So uh, we can create all these um, uh, waveform changes that may affect how you read this uh, waveform. So excellent, excellent uh, read, Amit. Do you know if this ventilator will show the stress index if it's not set at square? I don't know that. Uh, that's a good question. I hope I hope that they, it will I hope happen. it doesn't, but it might, yeah. yeah. All right, so we have nine minutes left and I put this image here. And uh, I'm going to put the the poll up or actually I closed the poll. I don't know where I put the poll. Do I have, yes, I have the poll. 
And I just want you to answer what's the main load and uh, for these patients, all right? I'm gonna give you the tag and just, oh, sorry, sabotaging myself. There we go, open, open poll. So in the poll, I want you just to talk about any PB discordance and what is the load? You can skip the tag, just go at it. If you want to answer what's the mode, that's okay. But we, we have limited time, so I want you to. And if there's a fellow, just send me a text, a chat message if you're interested in. If not, I will read it. For the sake of time. Great job. All right. Twenty seconds. All right, the polling has ended and let's share the results. Ready, team. So you should be able to see the results right now. The majority of you chose volume control. What is the load? There was a, com a combination of PMOS elastic and resistive so we got one of each uh, so so we, th this is perfect we're uh, essentially resistive is winning uh the rest are not then describe the trigger the majority felt this was normal and some failed triggers uh so that would be the second option in terms of inspiration it was felt that it was uh there was some mild work shifting and the cycle was felt to be normal and then expiration, a majority felt that it was normal in some work. Alrighty, so I don't see if anybody said that they wanted to read it. No. Alright. So, uh, yeah, we agree this is vo volume control. We, we know that CMB S. So, so the load, huh? uh, you can see this is a trigger breath. This is a mandatory uh, uh breath in which the this one was triggered by the patient this was triggered by the machine so was this one uh triggered by the machine uh then once that the the it triggers the flow is controlled and remember uh and so th this will not change it's the same figure and this one reflects actually the elastic uh resistive and pmos for the patient so as we look at it, you, you can see that it, it ends nicely in uh, at this point, but at the next one, actually it's higher than the other one. And this one is higher. So the, the question is in which, which one of these, what, what's happening in between these, right? What, what, is, what is the challenge here? Uh, it, we're used to see them scoop down if the patient is doing effort to inhale. Uh, but here we have this size, this size, and this size. Any thoughts of what's going on here? Anybody? Expiratory effort. Yeah, so so either the, the patient was 
uh, the, the patient, uh, the, the key, I think, is down here on this one, uh, in which you can see that the patient, instead of having the nice decay, is having this uh, waveform that's moving away from the baseline. So when I saw this, the, the read that I had for, for this patient is that actually the patient is doing expiratory effort. So uh, as the breath was being delivered, the patient was trying to exhale, he gets the breath, the and the, and the long the this reflects if, if there was a higher elastic load than than what it is so it's the the presence of pmos actually doing effort against the against the the system so i thought it was a good example of how the the pmos can affect one way or the other um in the in the effort i think that many of you read this one as a failed trigger and it could be relaxation again it seems that today is one of those uh, nice observations that we will leave us pondering for a good amount of time, whether in somebody that is having expiratory effort and has a decay on the on the flow towards baseline, is that a missed trigger or is it just relaxation of the expiratory muscles as they're doing that? Uh, and I have to ponder a little bit more on that and, and discuss and we can get back to you with that good question. Um, but that could be, uh, interpret it rapidly if you if you have an automatic software you can imagine that you you would say that that could be a failed uh trigger uh in terms of inspiration i don't see any work shifting uh it looks relatively flat in terms of cycle i don't see any activity at the after the cycle uh to to tell me that there was any inspiratory activity so i agree that this is normal and in terms of expiratory, I think that there's expiratory work, at least on this uh, breath that it's over here that continues during that inspiration. So with that, we're gonna stop. We have two minutes left. This is the CME credit. I think that uh, you guys uh, read this amazingly. Re really, I applaud uh, Thind and uh, Ahmed, unbelievably well, good reads, but. I would invite anybody to to jump and, and read. Don't be afraid. This is the, the place where we learn. We I'm I learn every time. Now we have another waveform to to read from. If you want to uh, connect more with us, here are our uh, Twitter handles. Here's the my my email. There's the Seba webpage QR if you want to share with your friends. And there's the CME for all of you. Again, thank you very much for joining and being part of. Uh, these seven end rounds and uh, learning all together. Have a great day. Thank you.